Welcome everybody to this eighth and final installment in our Gospel of Luke series. Um, today we're going to be in Luke chapter 22. And so I want to say this morning, aren't you glad that we serve a God of a second chance? And sometimes a third chance and a fourth chance as well, right? Some of us can sing with that New Day Psalmist Todd Galbraith and say, Lord, I messed up so many times. I went left when you said right. I'll understand if you want to let me go. But you held on to me and you wouldn't let me go. And you wouldn't let me go. I know our friend Peter in the text today is glad about that, that we serve a God of a second and third and sometimes fourth, fifth, sixth chance because Peter messed up big time in the text we have today. He denied Jesus. He denied his community of faith. And then he denied Jesus again for a third time. And Mark's gospel said Peter even cursed that third time when he denied Jesus. Hmm. And so he went away feeling failed, uh, feeling like a failure, feeling defeated, feeling um, sad and weeping bitterly. He could see a whole chapter of his life closing right there. But I'm so glad this morning that with our God, when one door is closed, another door is open. Hallelujah. Amen. So God is opening doors for you. Do you believe that this morning? God is opening doors for you. And our title this morning, therefore, is Closing Doors, Opening Doors. Closing Doors, Opening Doors. Let us pray. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Neme kubali kumwata yesu. Neme kubali kumwata yesu. Neme kubali kumwata yesu. Sitarudi, sitarudi. Lord Jesus, help us to follow you more nearly, love you more dearly, and see you more clearly through this message on today. I pray that you would remove me from myself so that we might hear from you. Speak, O oh God. May these words out of my, my mouth, the meditations on all hearts that view this message, be acceptable to you. God, our strength, our redeemer. Amen. So Peter messed up big time, y'all. I've just said he, he made some mistakes here. And let's just review them here. So mistake number one that uh, I see Peter making is that he tried to accomplish God's will in his own strength and power. If you go back a few verses in Luke 22, because we are in Luke 22, we're in verses 54 through 62, which is Peter's denial. But if you scroll back a few verses and go back to 31 through 34, we see that when Jesus predicted to his disciples that he was going to be arrested and going to be uh, murdered, Peter was the one who jumped up and said, oh no, Lord, oh no, not on my watch. I'm here to defend you. Jesus said to him, look, go back to verse 31. He said, Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. You see that? Jesus knew that Peter was going to get all turned around and that he was going to have to turn back and follow Jesus in the right direction, right? And then, but then Peter said to him in verse 33 of Luke 22, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. See, Peter was de declaring himself different uh, better and braver than those other disciples. Uh, he said, even if those other scaredy cat disciples are going to, uh, you know, desert you, I'm going to be here. I'm going to follow you, Jesus, no matter what. And then in verse 34, Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. Hmm. Peter wanted to be so strong. He wanted to be that rock that Jesus had predicted he would be back in Matthew 16. Um, if some of you recall that passage, that's where Jesus was on a boat with his disciples and he asked his disciples, he said, who, who do 
do people say that I am? And they were given answers like, okay, maybe you're, you're a prophet. You're like Jeremiah or Isaiah or something like that. And, and then Jesus asked his disciples, he said, but who do you say that I am? And that's when Peter, our boy, stepped up and said, I know the answer. You are the Messiah, son of the living God. And Jesus affirmed that he said, yes, Simon Peter. He called him Peter, which is Petros, which is Greek for rock. He said, yes, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So Peter, I mean, he naturally he wanted to be so strong. He wanted to be the leader. He, he was ready to rumble with the sword, y'all. It says in the in the gospel text that when the angry mob came to arrest Jesus, uh, all the disciples were there, and and one of the disciples or someone in the crowd pulled out a sword and chopped off one of the Roman soldiers' ears. Now most people assume that this was Peter because Peter was is always the. Uh, you know, the impetuous, passionate one. And so most believe that it was Peter who tried to defend Jesus. Peter in his flesh, with his sword, with his human strength, um, was ready to rumble. But Jesus had a better plan. And so Peter's first mistake was trying to make God's plan happen by his own might and his own strength. I dare say some of us have made this mistake ourselves. I don't know. I don't think I'm the only sinner right there or Peter's the only one. So we try to make it happen when God says, no, that's not how we're going to get from, that's not how we're going to get there from here. But some of us insist and we strive and we strive and we push and we push against a door that is closed. It's done. Can I get a witness in here? Anybody ever tried to get God's will done your way and it was a big mistake? Anybody? So that was Peter's first mistake. He tried to make God's will come to fruition his own way in his, his own time. Mistake number two was that then Peter kind of backed off from Jesus, right? He tried to keep a safe distance. If you look at verse 54 of our text in Luke 22, it says, after they arrested Jesus, they led him away and brought him to a, a high priest's house, the high priest's house. And then it continues on in verse 54 to say, Peter followed from a distance. Aha, aha, from a distance. You see that? He tried to follow at a distance. After the arrest scene and Jesus saying, okay, that's enough with all these swords and putting the man's ear back on, all the other disciples scattered, except John and, and the women, according to John's gospels, except them. So they stayed close to Jesus and Peter was kind of staying close so all the others denied and were scattered. John and the women were staying close, but Peter was kind of right in the middle right there. He stayed a little bit distant. And so Peter was kind of in a lukewarm position. And we know Jesus doesn't like lukewarm, right? He followed at a distance and, and Peter was alone. His bravado just fell away. Look at verse 55 of our text. It says, when they lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard, in other words, the courtyard was outside the high priest's house and the, 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 mock, the, the horrible trial was going on inside the house. So Peter was, so when they lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down, Peter sat among them. You see, he didn't go in. So Peter wasn't in the high priest. He was at a distance out in the courtyard. Peter tried to follow Jesus right up to Golgotha, but he failed because he started to consider probably his own personal safety. Hmm. Anybody here ever tried to play it safe with God because of your own personal safety? Am I the only sinner that's listening here right now? God was telling you to take a risk, to take a leap of faith, but you were too scared. So you stayed back, you pulled back. Mm. So you can't play it safe once you've decided to follow Jesus, right? I like how Christian rapper Andy Mineo put it. He put it like this. He said, my God good, but he's not safe now. Following Jesus is exciting, but it's also daring and risky as well. You can't decide to follow Jesus, but at a safe distance. Well, you never have to take a chance. You never have to risk anything. You never have to try anything new. Hmm. I tried that. I'm a living witness. Some of you are witnesses as well. I tried that when I was coming out of my career in architecture. I was trying to hold onto that doorknob to keep that door a little open as I reached forward into the ministry, trying to, trying to hold that door open. God told me to let go. 
And when I let it go, the other door started opening. It was painful, friends, because even my husband looked at me and said, you quitting your job in architecture? Well, how are we going to pay the mortgage? Yeah. So, and we almost, we almost got a, we almost got foreclosed on there because we could not pay the mortgage. I'm telling you, God is good. When one door is closed, another door is open. Sometimes many doors are open. Oh, friends, aren't you glad we serve a God of a second chance? Daily walking close with Jesus is not going to be comfortable or safe. So if your Christian life is too comfortable and too safe, you might want to check the distance, see how far you are from the Lord. Amen. So Peter's first mistake was that he was trying to do everything in his human strength and his own uh, human power. The second mistake was that he tried to follow say, at a safe distance, right? The third mistake was his denial. The three denials. You can't confess Jesus one minute and then deny Jesus the next minute. So in verse 56, it says, Then a servant girl saw Peter sitting by the firelight. You see that? Peter was nice and cozy there by the nice warm firelight, keeping himself safe, right? She stared at him and said, This man was with him too. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I don't know him. Mm. See, that was the first denial. I don't even know Jesus. He denied Jesus. And then the text goes on in 58 to say, A little while later, Someone else saw him and said, you are one of them too. But Peter said, man, I am not. So here, Peter not only denied Jesus the first time, but then he denied the whole fellowship, the whole crew that he had been traveling with for like three years now. I, I, I don't know them either. I'm not part of them. He closed the door on community. I'm not connected with them. An hour later, it says in verse 59, someone else insisted, this man must have been with him because he is a Galilean too. Peter responded, man, I don't know what you're talking about. The third denial. And then in verse 60 of our text in Luke 22, it goes on to say, at that very moment, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Mm. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered the Lord's word before a rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. Mm. See, Peter's heart had been ready for revolution with the sword in his own power, in his own will, in his own, and he was still striving, striving, striving for this worldly plan in his human power, but God had a different plan. And when Jesus looked right at Peter, I think that's when Peter realized that his plan was not going to work. Have you ever been caught dead wrong and you knew Jesus was looking right at you? Friends, if you've never had Jesus look right at you, right into your soul, you might want to check yourself and make sure you're in the faith. Hmm. You might want to examine yourself, make sure you're saved. There's good news, however. There's always good news with Jesus, right? So I believe that Jesus could not have been looking at Peter with disappointment because someone can only, and I say I wasn't there, but someone can only disappoint you if um, they do something that you weren't expecting them to do, right? And so Jesus had already predicted that Peter was going to deny him. So he could not have been surprised or even saddened or shocked by it because he had already said it. So I think it could not have been a, a look of disappointment. Also, and again, I wasn't there and the Bible doesn't say what the look was about. So I can't say definitively, but I doubt that this look was a look of condemnation either. I really doubt it. Why do I doubt it? Because all along the way of this sordid trial, this horrific and illegal execution, Jesus was caring for everybody else tenderly and with compassion for them, whilst he was the one who was suffering. Mm, Jesus is so amazing, friends. He wept for Jerusalem. He, he, he put the Roman soldier's ear back on and healed him. 
he, he spoke with the women who were wailing along the Via Dolorosa and comforted them. He, he prayed for forgiveness for his torturers, even as they were torturing him. He, he cared for the thief on the cross next to him, that he would want it to be remembered, that he didn't want his life to end up be amounting to nothing. Jesus promised he would be in paradise, and, and those are just the ones recorded in Luke. Jesus proved what Paul wrote later in Romans chapter 8, 1. There is therefore no condemnation when we're following Jesus. No condemnation. But there is, however, correction. Amen? There is correction, and it's very humbling when the Lord has to correct you in love and looks right at you. Have you ever had Jesus look right at you and correct you? Mm. And so, after Jesus looked right at Peter, Peter wept bitterly. Because from his perspective, all seemed to be lost. He had put all his strength, all his human resolve into defending Jesus, but it failed. And failure hurts. It, it stings. It feels bitter. It feels bad. Peter must have felt like a real punk too, y'all. Because a, a servant girl called him out and he denied. He denied his, his whole team, his leader, to save his own hide. Hmm. And so I wasn't there. I wasn't there. But I'm wondering. I, I, I'm wondering if the look made Peter weep bitterly because he just didn't understand it. Maybe he just couldn't understand how somebody could look at him with love, with compassion, with forgiveness, even when he was messing up so bad. Can anybody relate? Lord, I messed up so many times. I, I went left when you told me to go right. I'll understand if you want to let me go. <clears throat> I bet that when Jesus looked at Peter, he looked at him with eyes of compassion and love and forgiveness, just like he looks at us even though we mess up. And Peter couldn't handle it. He couldn't receive it at that point. He couldn't understand it, at least not yet. And so he left, weeping bitterly. But how many of you know that Weeping may endure for a night, right? But joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Hang in there because it might not be that very next morning, but it might be the morning after that, right? And so we serve a God of a second chance and a third chance, sometimes a fourth chance. And when one door is closed, another door is open. Because if you read on in the Gospel of Luke, oh, hallelujah, and you get to Luke 24, in the first two verses it says, but on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking spice they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. <laughs> this was the morning after the next morning after the bitter weeping. And guess what? The door was wide open, friends. And when the women went back and told the disciples, they didn't believe it. But Peter, it says, Peter got up and ran to the tomb. He stooped down looking in and he saw the linen cloths by themselves. And then he went home amazed at what had happened. Y'all, Peter ran to the tomb. You see, in that day, men did not run. It was considered undignified. And so, because they wore these long garbage, it was considered undignified. Running was something that children did. Running was something that women did as they ran after children. And so P Peter ran. He didn't care anymore what anybody thought. He didn't care anymore what anybody would say to him. He ran to see for himself. And Peter ran right through that open door that was at the tomb. Can you see yourself running through that open door? Because God is opening doors for you. Jesus opened the door to impossibility by raising up from the grave. He's alive. The doors have been closed for Peter. Gone was the day of him doing things in his own strength, and his own might. Can you hear that door closing? Slam that door. Gone was the day of him playing it safe with Jesus. Close that door. Gone was the day of him denying Jesus, even if it meant his own death. That door closed when Peter went running through that open door at the tomb. And the tomb had a big, impossible stone door, but even that door was opened. 
When those doors closed, Peter li Peter's life opened up to the impossibilities that Jesus had declared over him before. And Jesus has declared over you impossibilities that you don't think are possible because you can't accomplish them in your own strength and you can't accomplish them in the way that you're trying to do it. But you need to go through that open door that God has opened. Close that old door, friend. Let it go and let Jesus open you up to new impossibilities. Amen. Amen.